Hey folks, it's Frith Guy here, how you doing? Welcome back to Estancia Lapacho, and we have got a very busy week all planned out. We've got a whole load of baling that we still need to do, we're going to finish doing the baling over there. We've got cultivating is underway, planting is underway, um, and there's a few other things happening as well. We've got plans for doing some ploughing and things like that. Um, the beginning of the week we have, well, we have our random event happen at the beginning of the week. Now, we still have the random event from last week, which is this barn find. But I thought I would leave it up to everybody to tell me whether or not you wanted me to keep this truck or get rid of this one and keep the old one. Um, and so there was a lot of comments about this one in the comment section. And... It was actually, it seemed pretty close. I, I, I haven't actually gone through and counted up the exact numbers. I've just kind of taken, give, gotten a rough idea across the week as comments have been coming out about it. Um, and it surprised me that the, there seems to be slightly more comments. It, I mean, I thought it was fairly well balanced, to be honest, between the two. But there do seem to be slightly more comments against this vehicle than there are in favour of this vehicle. Uh, so this is the one we're taking back to the shop and we're selling and we're keeping the older blue one. Uh, a lot of people didn't seem to like the um, the brighter red and yellow colours on this one. And that seems to be the reason that you want me to get rid of it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking this one back to the shop. I just thought I would take the scenic route rather than going um, the normal way that we always go. As we're going all the way down here. We're just going past some land here. We're thinking of buying that field 25 at some point. Um... And then we'll take this one over to the shop. So item two on the agenda is what is going to happen this week. So my, if you want to know where the list is, you need to go to my Facebook page. And you will have to scroll down through a couple of the posts. And then you will be able to find on the Facebook page a list of um, various random events. Now I am hoping to at some point have my own website up and running in which case it will be easier to find this stuff uh, but at the moment um, you've got to go onto Facebook and you've got to hunt around for it a little bit so I do apologize for that however I will tell you what it is the you've got obviously you've got three options it's gonna be crops animals or machinery depending on what I roll on the dice so the first roll came up with a three I want to sell that one so there is our money that we get for that one and then we can just go back through here and this one is working. You can see that I have removed the ground response mod. Uh, so many of you agreed with me that the bouncing around was a little bit too excessive. It wouldn't be leaping up and down like it was if this was a ploughed field. So it seemed a bit overdone. So I've removed the ground response mod so that it is a little bit more realistic for us. So that one is carrying on there. Uh, we've got this one here, which we will at some point be buying as that's what everybody seems to want me to do. Uh, so we're, actually we're going to do that very soon. Um, we might not do it just yet because there's something else that we need to do first. Um, and then we're going to sell this one. A lot of people have got this one. So we're actually going to sell this one. And we're going to um, buy... Yeah, get rid of that. Uh, we're going to be buying the red one that we've got up there, the man truck. And um, so that we can have the seed tender on it. But then we can also use it for this one. So at the moment it's going to stay leased and we will buy it... A little bit later on when we finish doing the seed drilling. But this one we are actually selling. We're getting rid of this one. So I'm taking this one down to the shop. So yes, as far as my roll was concerned, I shook a three. And then we've got uh, six options. So I did uh, another shake of the dice. This time it came up with a six, which is quite possibly the worst one that can happen on the animals. Well, although I suppose actually having to kill off 10% of my animals is not really good. That's number one. Disease, 10%. Of the main herd die due to disease. So that's one of them so whichever is our main animal we lose 10 percent of them um and then twins is you know a really good one we can get stuff back from that and there's a few monetary items that we've got to pay out however this one was number six the animals have escaped and they have damaged one random item of machinery on the farm which we must sell and then buy back before i do before i sell this one i just want to show you I counted up on here. Now, for this, for the purposes of this one, for items that I thought that um, animals could realistically damage, I excluded those two because I didn't think they could do a lot to that. I've seen animals sit all over these things and they do nothing to them. Um, I also excluded the front weights and I excluded the placeables. So I did include everything else. So all of this lot was all included, all on the list, even the family car. 
I did exclude that one item there, but the rest of it was all in. So it could be any of these items damaged, and then we have to sell them and buy them back. Okay, so it could be the barrel call. We've got to sell, then buy back, and then sell again. No, it's actually this one. I It came up with a two. So there's 30 items on the list, and I just go to Google. I type random number, one to 30. It came back with two. So this is the one here that I have to sell and buy back. The Diamant HS12. So I've got to get it down here, and then I've got to sell it. So, um, and actually, I think that what I said was, I didn't actually specify it in there, but my intention wasn't that it had to be brought here and sold, um, that I just have to sell it just as it is. So let me just sell the truck a minute, because this one here, we can, we can bring this one down and we can sell this one, because we want the cash for this one, because we're going to be buying the man truck. So I'll sell that one for $150,000, and then we've got to sell the header, and we've got to buy it back. So if I just go into the harvesters a minute, not in the harvesters, into the headers, it's actually the HS12 that I've got here. Um, that's the HS8. That one there is the one that, yes, we do have that one there. So I need to sell this one and then buy it back again. So if I go into the garage and I go onto here, I'm actually going to go back out here a second. I'm just going to run over to the combine and we're going to take a look because there it is on the front. I just want to see what the color it was. And so that's fine. So we go into here, we go to garage, we sell because we've got to. Bye bye, HS12. We get $28,720 for selling this one, and we immediately must buy it back. This is part of our, um, yeah, this is part of the thing. This is one of the things that happens with this. We have to do whatever it says. So we have to buy it back as it was, which was that. That was a configuration. Cost us $40,700 to buy back. So we've just lost about $13,000, $14,000 because the animals escaped and damaged the header. So we'll go and get the header another time with the combine. We'll have to travel down there and we'll have to pick it up and we'll um, we'll bring it back up. Um, so yes, that is the the damage that has been done. I'm just going to start this one up and we're going to carry on. Uh, oh, no, wait, sorry. I'm so sorry. No, I need to stop this one a minute because there's still something else that we need to do. I forgot the other bit. Um, animals escape and damage one random item of machinery, sell and buy back to represent costs and they damage the crops in one random field now we've only got crops at the beginning of this week we can't really count field nine because that's not done yet so we've only got crops in three fields we've got sugarcane in field two and then we've got beans in field seven and eight that is all we've got we don't have anything else so um we need to cultivate half of the field to represent those losses which basically means we've got to give up half of one of those fields now we've only got three fields there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to roll a dice i'm going to do it right now you can't actually see it because i don't have a webcam but i'm going to go that is a one or a two that is a three or a four and that is a five or a six and here i'm going to roll it i don't know if you can hear i'm, I'm going to do it close to the the mic so you can actually hear the, the dice falling here we go it's a five it's a five ladies and gentlemen i've rolled a five that means i have to sacrifice half of my sugarcane field there that one right there. So it was one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got a five, which means I have to cultivate half of the sugarcane field. That is the other part of it. So we're just going to leave the baler for a minute and we're going to go over and we're going to go to our cultivator. It's currently busy. It's currently doing something. I'm actually going to put a halt to that because it's, it's going to have to come back to this. It is going to have to return to this job. Uh, why am I going around in a circle? I need to go over this way. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, you, my mouse is still causing me problems. You can see this. I'm Logitech. If anyone from Logitech is listening, this is getting you a bad name now. Look, you can see this, okay? This is constantly showing up in my videos, and I've got people who watch these videos who will quite possibly want to, you know, possibly consider buying a G403 mouse, and you still haven't replaced my damaged mouse. Um, and I'm going to keep I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep complaining about it until it gives up completely and I'm forced to buy another one or they actually replace it like they're supposed to under warranty. I've only had it for like three months. OK, anyway, um, I need fuel. Now, where's the fuel? That's the thing. I've, I've hardly got any fuel at all. Do I? You know, what I'm thinking that we should actually just buy fuel. We should get some fuel and we, we should buy some. But no, what I need to do is I need to plow up half of this field. Now, this is actually going to plow. So if we do come to replant this, um, we'll end up uh, being able to get a better yield in the end. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to take a roughly halfway line. I'm sort of looking at the 
the line that I can see out through there. I think this is about halfway right here. So if I just press H, I go up across here. It should, in theory, go roughly halfway. So I'm just going to put that one there like that. And I'm going to press H. I'm going to see what it does. Is it going to work? There we go. It is actually doing it. It's Is it going straight? Yes, it is going straight. It's doing it. It's cultivating half of our field. Can you see that? Half of our field is currently disappearing. This is heartbreaking. This is what happens when the cows get out. The cows escape, they run rampant across the field and they've destroyed, decimated the crop. Now I realise they wouldn't actually destroy the crop this much. So this is just to represent that we, you know, them going through has damaged the crop so severely across the whole field that it's essentially we've lost half, the, uh, half of it. So, you know, we've got a tiny bit of artistic license working on this, but this is essentially what has happened. So I don't think it matters which side the tractor goes. It's going to go that way. Um, oh, actually, yeah, it's going back towards the yard, isn't it? So, yes, even though it kind of looks like there's nothing in the middle, that is still sugarcane in there. So it is all going to be used. We're just going to let this one continue on here now. And the other thing is, I once again, um, well, actually, the, the weekly question was something different. And I'm going to go to the weekly question. We're just going to watch this one destroying our sugarcane for a minute. This is this is not good. We, we worked hard for the sugarcane. We were hoping to do it again. So we may end up replanting some of this. But anyway, my weekly question that I asked you this week was what did you want me to do over there? Did you want me to get the ground modification mod and cover the area with concrete and then put some sheds down? Did you want me to cover it with concrete and put no sheds down? Did you want me to do uh, to just use a plow and plow it all up and then cultivate it and use basically a packed dirt texture? Pretty much like what we've got here. Um, and put some sheds on it or just have packed dirt with no sheds or have just plain grass. Now we have 1,701 people answer this question and of the 1,701, 42 want just plain packed dirt with no shed. Uh, you know, actually I think the tractor's probably alright going down over the bank there, that's fine. Um, yeah, just 42 people wanted that. 57 people wanted just plain concrete. 98 people wanted just grass, 143 people wanted dirt with sheds, and 1,361 people want me to put concrete down and put sheds down on top. So it's fairly resounding result there. It's, it's, it's fairly unanimous on that one that I'm going to be putting concrete down over that area down there, and I'm going to be building some sheds. So that's another thing that we've got on our list of to-dos. Um, however, my weekly question this week and I was still kind of wondering what I should use as my weekly question this week when I sort of fired everything up and was getting stuff ready. And then I seen that it came up with this um, thing that we've got to do. So I thought, you know, well, we'll wait and see what happens with this because I've got, I did have another question lined up. I did think of one, but no, this is going to be the question right here on this for this week. Do you want me to replant this sugar cane? We've lost half of our field. We could just leave the field lying fallow until such time as we do another sugarcane harvest and we just harvest that half of the field. And then we do something with the field as a whole after the next harvest. Or I can replant this now. We got the, we're got we going to get the plowed bonus on this half of the field so ultimately we'll get a better yield on this side. Um, but we, we've got two sides of the field now. Uh, one half we've lost the crop. It's gone. It's, it's vanished. And this is what's happening right now. And then we've got that crop over there. So do you want me to replant, replant the bit that the cows have damaged? Or do we just leave it until after the harvest? It's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. So my next item on the agenda is I'm going to get fuel. And I'd like to go and get the fuel trailer. I'd like to bring that one, uh, buy a fuel trailer, bring that one back. And we're going to... Um, then take it to the field and we're going to refuel the tractor in the field but we're not going to do that just yet I'm actually going to stop here we're going to go over to the man truck over here we will be buying this one enough people have said buy it that I'm going to do it we've already sold the other one so this one is now for us to be buying this that's that's what we're going to be doing with it we, we, we need to buy this one it's it's an excellent machine it's serving us well we're very pleased with it so yes we will be buying this truck and this will be our only farm truck because we have already sold the barrel core. 
Quite a lot of people actually said that they were pleased that I was giving the option to get rid of Barrel Core because they don't like to see it. Lots of people have been using it because I think in part because um, when uh, Platinum Edition was released, the trailers, the previews and everything, they showed that one being used. That, that was the one that was being um, shown. And a lot of you have sort of said, well, you didn't really like it. It's not really a great machine. Um, and you don't want to see it sort of being used as a farm machine. So uh, this is the one that we've got now. So I'm just going to bring that one back up there. I love the fact that we've got this on this trailer, uh, on the back of this lorry. It's just a truck. It's a truck. We're, we're in... Um, I think we press K to switch over. Yes, we do. Good guess. I'm learning. I'm, well, it's not guess. It's, that's experience, that is. That was pure, unadulterated fantastic experience that was i'm doing really well aren't i um i've missed a little tiny bit there with the um with the cultivator that's not very good oh well i think that the uh sea drill that we've got does actually direct drill um however i am cultivating everything at the moment because that one adds the plowed bonus to it as well and none of the fields have currently got plowed bonus on them so let's just close all of those up and put the hired help going there we go that one's going fine so now that we don't have it bouncing around like a lunatic, it does actually look a little bit better suited to pulling this seed drill. And I don't think that it's underpowered for the seed drill. It's, it's borderline, it's definitely borderline, but yeah, now it's, it wouldn't be bouncing around like that in real life. So I think that it could cope with this one. Because the seed, an actual seed drill is not that heavy a machine to pull. It doesn't have to do the kind of work that a cultivator has to do. So a cultivator is actually going to put more strain on a machine than a seed drill ever would. Um, so I'm just going through. This one's carrying on there. We want to go to this one because we need to get to the shop really quickly. We're going to now buy a... Uh, a what do you call it? I think a majigger. Who's me call it? A fuel trailer. That's the one I'm looking for. Fuel trailer. We're going to buy a fuel trailer and we're going to bring that one back to the garage across the road from us. And we're going to fill it up with fuel. And then we're going to bring it over we're over into the field and we're going to refuel that Stara that is working. It's been working diligently with that cultivator. It's done a lot of work with the cultivator. And we'll be able to refuel it. And then eventually we'll be able to carry on with the baling. The baling has got to be done first. And then after the baling has been done, then we can start taking a look at getting the ground modification mod and getting some sheds and stuff built over that area as well well we may just do a cut of grass on that area first right i've bought the trailer and i feel that maybe i should apologize to you before i show you what i've done with the trailer uh, most of you gave the reason for getting rid of the barn find as you didn't like the color the the, the red and the yellow you thought it was too bright whereas those of you who wanted to keep the barn find said yes you should keep it because it looks a lot nicer it's, this is just drab and plain whereas the other one um it, it looks a lot nicer it's a lot brighter it's a lot friendlier so here is my compromise <laughs> i got rid of the truck for you because more of you wanted the truck you know, it seemed like more of you wanted me to get rid of the truck than wanted to keep it so i personally wanted to actually keep that truck because i really like the red and the yellow combination i thought it was really good so this is this is what we're doing we're, we're buying this one instead um, we just pull forward a little bit so I'm in the right place. We now have the red and yellow. So we've got the red and yellow. It's here on the farm to stay. And we've also got the, the, the older drab truck as well. So everybody should be happy. There should be no complaints to this. I think everybody is going to be thoroughly delighted with my choices. Um, bring on the comments. Here they go. Hey, here we go. I, I reckon we're going to have a stream of comments about this one. Um... That's okay. Just, just let's let's hear it. Let's let's hear what you gotta say. Uh, bring it on. I'm I stand by my decision. I am sticking with this fuel tanker. I'm sticking with it. Okay, you made me get rid of the barn find. I wanted the barn find. I couldn't keep the barn find, so I'm keeping this one. I am keeping this trailer no matter what. Anyway, um, I think this truck's actually a little bit light for this trailer. It seems to be slight. The back end is sliding around a little bit. If we just bring it in here and I'll fill it up very quickly with fuel. Um, it's going to let me. Fill. Fill. Oh, I need to press uh, R to refill. I was, I was busy pressing um, empty. Uh, that's, that's not what we need. 3,750 litres of fuel. So let's just ease around the corner now now we're loaded up with fuel this is going to be a real test for this pickup and do i go back up through the main farm or do i just go sliding on up this road up here i'm going to slide on up this road up here uh 
There is no road to slide on up. I thought there was. I was misled. I was lied to. I thought there was a road there. Okay, so let's go back out onto the main road. We, we can get in front of that one. That's a 2CV. Come on. We can beat the 2CV. No. The 2CV is beating us. It's not supposed to be able to do that. Those things are like... It's, that is, it's like a cardboard box with, you know, wooden reinforcings on the corner being powered by a hairdryer. That is a 2CV. Summed up, basically. And it was actually beating us down the road. That is just embarrassing. That really is. We were beaten by a cardboard box with a hairdryer inside it. That's, that's, that's not the way forward in life. You, do, you don't want to live with that kind of humiliation, do you? Abs well, I don't anyway. Um... <laughs> I'm probably upset a load of people now because you're going to turn around and tell me, oh, well, actually, we drive a 2CV. Um, yeah, if you drive a 2CV and you're really upset by my comments, I do apologize. Um, however, I stand by my slander. Um, it is a cardboard box with wooden reinforcements on the corner and powered by a hairdryer. I, I, I stand by that slander. I really do. I, I, that's, that's what I believe that the 2CV is, is best represented as. Um, let me just park right up there. I'm, I'm, I am going to stop now. I really am going to get myself into trouble with somebody, aren't I? And we're going to come up over to you. And we're going to let you just move on down a little bit. And we're going to stop you right there. Sunshine, move on a little bit. And then we can start loading you up with fuel. This one can fill up with fuel. And I think maybe the other... Let me just go and take a quick look a minute. Uh, you're fine. You're no problem either. And you up here are 75 litres. See, that one's probably doing all right. I don't think we need to worry about refueling this one just yet. Is it actually getting all the way? I think it is getting at the end of the field. I don't think there's any problems with that. So let's go back through here. Uh, right, that's now stopped refueling. Oh, I switched that one off. I didn't want to do that. Let's go forward. So we'll take this one back down to the yard and we'll park it up. And then we need to get on with the bailing. That's, we, we've sort of done everything else. We've prepared everything. We've... We've, um, we're dealing with the animals. We've got to do this. And what essentially the reason that we're cultivating it, um, even though the animals have come along and destroyed it, is because they've already destroyed like the crop in the field. So what we're doing with the cultivators is we're cultivating it in because you know we're accepting our losses and we're moving on from there. Um, I have actually seen that being done. Only once, but I did see it being done. So it's a legitimate course of action if a, animals get into your field and they ruin your crop. Is a definite, legitimate course of action. Um, now, where shall I stick this one? I reckon if we just bring this one in through here. And... Right, I'm not actually sure where I want to put the fuel trailer. I'm going to use this shed a bit. I'm not going to use it a huge amount. I am going to use it. Uh, I think we'll actually just stop right there. We can stop both of them there. Um, right, there's one thing that I want to do before I start doing the work up there. I want to unhitch... Oh, no, I want to unhitch that one, not hitch it back on again. Uh, that one can stay there. I want to go over to those cows. They've got the grass out in front of them. That grass sort of turned up there uh, back when we first put the cows in. They should now... There should be some of the numbers should have, like, um, lowered down a bit. No, they haven't. We need some more silage and hay, but the grass is still absolute maximum, so we can't actually do anything. I was actually thinking it would be a good idea to, like, remove some of that grass, but it doesn't look like we can do that. So we can park this one up a minute. This one can stop here and not do anything. And we can go back up to the field. There we go. And now we can actually get started on our baling. So we have done everything that we needed to do to prepare the map for this week. We have had an absolute disaster with our cows getting out. We're going to have to make sure they don't do that again. Um, and, yeah, now we can carry on with the baling. At long last, we've got all this to do. So that is quite, that's quite a drastic um, option to happen there. Uh, one of the machinery ones is literally nothing happens. Nothing happens this week. Nothing good or bad. So it's, it's, it's just, that's, that's one of the options. It's not the only option, though. Um, I, th I thought I might actually go through some of the list here. I can't see all of the machinery list, uh, not on my screens, but I can see all of the crops. So the crops one, we've got a mold, mold in the storage barn. Uh, we must immediately sell the crop that we have uh, the highest stored quantity of. So whichever crop we've got the most of in storage, we must immediately sell all of it for the lowest available price. Uh, to represent the crop has gone mouldy and we're um, basically getting rid of it as quickly as we can before it gets any worse. Um, so you, you're pretty much taking a loss on that. 
Then we've got uh, high yield. Add 50% to a grain in storage of your choice to represent a higher than normal yield. So it doesn't matter which one we have. We could just take the one that's stored the highest or we could like look at the most valuable one and say that would actually be really good. Or we could say, you know, well, pigs, we're going to need a load of corn. We'll, we'll um, add 50% to the corn so that the pigs are really helped out with that. Um, any of those options, we can do any of them. Uh, pests in the storage barn remove 25% of a stored crop. I think that is the one that we had, isn't it? Where we tipped a load of grain out on the floor and then we cultivated it. Um, that's, so that's the pests in the storage barn one. Uh, then we got disease in the field. Cultivate one half of a random field that's planted with crops to represent the loss. Uh, pretty much what we're doing now with the cows, except that this one with the cows, we also had damaged machinery as well. So uh, we, we kind of had a two for one with uh, this week's episode. Uh, then we've got a disease in the field. The next crop to be planted can use no fertilizer of any kind to represent that particular loss, um, which personally I was quite pleased with. I, I, I quite liked that one. I was quite pleased when I came up with that one. Um, so it's, it's not a disease that's immediately obvious, but we ultimately suffer because we have a much lower than normal yield um, coming from the field the next time it's planted. And then finally we've got delivery bonus. The next trailer load of crops to be sold, not a train car, so just a regular trailer, will get double the normal price. So we are making note of the amount that we receive for the next trailer load of crop that we sell and then I will, man I will um, add it in later into the XML file. Uh, so yeah, that's the six different ones that we've got for crops. Um, obviously, I am always open to suggestions for any changes that we might want to make to those. And then we'll, let's go on to the animals one. I can see the animals. I can't see the machinery ones. I've only, I can only see two of the machinery ones. So we'll do those in a minute. Um, animals, we've got disease. 10% of the main herd die due to disease. It's a little bit morbid, but, you know, sometimes these things happen. Um... Then we've got number two is... Careful. I'm busy trying to read on a different screen to what I'm actually playing on, so I'm kind of driving all over the place here and doing a bad job of it at the same time. Uh, let me bring that one down there so we can carry on through there. Excellent. Right. Uh, yeah, so number two is vet bills. We have to pay out $100, or pay out whichever map the wrong, or dollars on this one, $100 per animal on the farm in unexpected vet bills. Now, at the moment, I just want to look at this one because at the moment we've got 163 cows. So we're looking at $16,300 to pay out for the cows. When we activate, because currently we don't have the pigs activated. We bought those beforehand. They're there ready. We're not actually doing anything with them at the moment. Um, so they don't count at the moment. But when we do decide to go in for pigs, we could have 500 animals here by the time the cows are growing a bit as well we could have realistically 500 animals on the map in which case that particular one comes up we've got to fork out fifty thousand dollars in vet bills because of our animals so that is going to be a particularly expensive week when that one comes up depending on what we're doing that just depends and uh, number three is twins a large number of animals give birth to twins larger litters than normal increase your stock by 10 percent so that's all stock so we get an extra 10 percent of um pigs and an extra 10 percent of cows uh as that's what we're doing on this map but yeah so i mean a bad combination would obviously be that one and then the following week then we get the vet bills that would be pretty grim um then number four we've got animals escape and damage a nearby farmer's crops we have to pay twenty-five thousand dollars in damages Animals and number five is the animals give a higher than normal yield add ten thousand dollars to your account So just whatever they're yielding whether it's um, you know better quality bacon from the pigs or um, The cows give much better milk for a little while. So we get an additional ten thousand dollars added to our account um, Which is obviously very very nice and then we've got number six, which is the one that we've had today, where the animals escape, damage one random item of machinery, which we have to sell and then buy back to represent the cost of damage, and damage the crops in one random field, where we have to cultivate half of the field to represent the losses. Um, which was not good. So then in the machinery, I can only see two of them. Um, I know that one of them is actually that nothing happens for the week, which is pretty good. I quite like that idea. Uh, we got machinery breakdown. A tractor or loader has broken down and cannot be used this week. So we just have to go for a tractor or a loader 
not a cob one. It's literally one of the machines that we use frequently. Um, it's broken down, and to represent that, we just can't use it for the week. That's it. Um, so we park it up somewhere, and we see, right, it's broken down, it's being repaired. And uh, number two is theft. To, so we have to sell two machines to the store, random across all machinery owned, and that does include like front weights and stuff. I've known people to lose their front weights. I actually knew a farmer, um, and he came in in the morning to find that all of the front weights had been stolen off of his tractors. They were on the tractors when he left, and he came back to the yard to find that the front weights had all been stolen, and three buckets from his JCB had been stolen as well. And he reckons that they were actually stolen and then taken off like 100 miles away, sold to a scrap merchant. Because you can imagine, that's a lot of weight on those um, items there, like on um, digger buckets and stuff. It's, there is a lot of weight on those things. So a quick, it's just a quick buck can be made by selling them to scrap merchants. Um, yeah, he was a little bit miffed about that, to be honest. A little bit put out by it, but... Um, yeah, it, it was quite, it surprised me as much as it surprised him, I think, that they came in and they went to all the effort of taking, those things were very heavy. He reckoned that one of those weights was about 800 kilos. So they, they must have worked very hard to get them off the tractors and out of the yard. I think, well, I can't remember what he said now, I think it was four of them. There were four weights altogether, the heaviest one being about 800 kilos. The other three, I think, were half a ton each. And that's a lot of weight. It was, it was something like that. I mean, don't quote me on it. I could be a little bit out on the numbers for the weights and stuff. But yeah, he lost four weights and three digger buckets. It was it was quite hilarious, to be honest. Um, once he'd sort of gotten the money back from the insurance company. Anyway, sell two machines to the store, random across everything owned, without taking them there, to represent the insurance money received after a theft. It's because if you lose something, I mean, at least as far as, you know, my insurance has always worked, they replace like for like. So if you've got an old machine that's three years old and it gets stolen, you're not going to get the money to buy a brand new one, are you? You're not going to receive back the money to buy a brand new one. You'll only receive back some of the money. You'll receive back the enough money to be able to buy a replacement of equivalent value, um, which would represent kind of a second-hand machine. So you've got set values on the machines and um, these depreciate over the years. And so... In order to, I was thinking, you know, how could I represent this? I can't just add in the money for a brand new tractor or something because we haven't lost anything and um, there's nothing bad has happened. So what we've got is we sell two machines to the store and then uh, without taking them there to buy the, um, without taking them there. So we, we kind of lose that money like you would through insurance and then we can either go and replace them with brand new ones or we can um, buy something else instead. Um, it's kind of the decision that you have to make if you're a farmer and you've had some machines stolen you're not going to get a brand spanking new machine back in its place you probably get a second hand machine back in its place or you could decide to fork out a little bit of extra money and buy a brand spanking new one instead so it's kind of those choices that you've got to make um and so that's that's what we would get so we'd have to sell two random machines across everything and it could literally be anything we've got all kinds of machines now and so that would be two of those um, and I, yeah, I can't read the rest of the list, so unfortunately I can't tell you the rest of them. Um, but we are getting very close to the end of the episode. I was wondering if I would have time to do all the bailing in this episode. I don't know if I will, actually. We might, we might not. We'll have to see. Um, we will just go and see. Actually, I can see now on the, on the map, because I'm sort of facing over that way. He's almost finished cultivating in our sugarcane, our lost precious sugarcane. I can't believe that. Probably the worst item on the list. It, well, I suppose maybe the theft thing is not particularly good because we do have to sell two random items. So it could potentially be two front weights, which isn't going to cost us a great deal. Um, but it also could potentially be the most expensive tractor or our truck, for example. I mean, our truck at the moment is leased, so that one wouldn't count. Um, but yeah, our most expensive tractor and a combine. That, that's going to be quite bad to buy back. Or the sugarcane harvester. That thing's like quarter of a million dollars. Um, so yeah, that potentially that one could be quite bad. Uh, I have a breakdown one as well. There's, uh, I'm pretty sure I got one that says breakdown. Um, we have to park up a machine and we have to lease a machine instead for the week to represent the costs of repair and stuff like that. Um, so a slightly more expensive breakdown because not all breakdowns are expensive some breakdowns are just time consuming which is you know where one of ours here with machinery breakdown park a tractor up in the corner of the field and we don't have it for the week while we repair it so it doesn't actually cost you a huge amount in parts it's just time 
So say you've got um, yeah, a dodgy lot of diesel or something, or there's a bit of mud in the diesel tank that got into the tractor and then it's clogged all the filters and the fuel line. So you've got to take it apart, you've got to clean it. Fuel filters are fairly cheap. I mean, you're looking at maybe, um, I mean, here in this country, I, I, don't, I, I, I wouldn't like to have. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. But I would say 20, 30 quid for the new, um, a couple of new fuel filters, depending on what sort of filters your machine runs. And that would be it. And the rest of it is literally just taking the thing apart and cleaning out any crud that might be accumulated in the bottom of the fuel tank and um, cleaning the fuel lines and making sure everything is properly cleaned out and then uh, putting it all back together. So you, you're, not, you're not sort of forking out a load of money for this. But what you are doing is, is, is time consuming. So that I feel is quite good with the, you know, we've got to put the tractor on the side of the fuel. So that's kind of a rundown on a lot of my list of things. You know what, we're going to carry on with doing some of this baling next week. We'll do a little bit more then. Um, that tractor still has quite a way to go over there. You can see just over in the distance. Um, so it, it'll finish it in the next episode uh, without too much problem. So we're going we're gonna to finish doing the baling in tomorrow's episodes. Uh, tomorrow's episode I should say and then we are going to go and get an Arkizan stacker and we're going to be using that one for gathering in the straw I was thinking of using like just using the trailer and doing it auto load um, I still like the idea of using the Arkizan stacker um, I'm actually I'm going to think about this a little bit more between now and tomorrow's episode because I'm this is, I'm using the Arkizan stacker in uh, Sandy Bay now and I don't really want to do the same thing across all of my realistic series um, I know some of you don't like the broad acre series at all because it's unrealistic uh, so really you've got these and you've got the Sandy Bay series for your uh, dose of decent realism and so I don't want to um, I don't want to do the same across both of them I'm, I'm very aware that some of you really dislike the broad acre stuff so um, you, you're more limited you've, you've got these two series to watch instead of three series which we used to do um i'm not going to change that I'm, I'm still not changing it i'm still happy i'm still like personally i'm happy with what i'm doing with that i mean, enough people really enjoy the broadacre stuff that i won't be stopping it um it's just that it's a little bit different to how i normally do things so maybe we should go with uh normal vehicles in this one well not normal maybe we should go for auto load in this one and then we could like use the uh, Merlot out in the field a bit as well. So we could like um, we could go to the bales, we could pick them up with the Merlot, and then we can run back um, to the auto load trailer, and then have it auto load the stack and sort of do it like that. Although I did do that a bit in Garala, didn't I? Um, yes, I, I'm genuinely taught. I don't know yet. I'll see. I'll probably end up buying the Arkizan stacker and we'll use it this time. And then maybe if you don't like it, we'll get rid of it later. And may do it like that. I don't really know. But anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing. That's what we're going to be doing this week. We're going to be working on that. And then once we've done that, the cultivating, the planting and that, that's all continuing on sort of behind the scenes. So we're carrying that on. Our next big task after we've done this baling. I'm missing a bit here. This is terrible. I will go back and get that, don't worry. For those of you who have OCD, I will get every single bit of straw in this field. That's a promise. Solemn promise. You'll have to tune in on tomorrow's episode to watch me do it, though, because I'm not going to do it now. How's that? How's that for bringing people back to the series? I thought that was quite good, personally. Um, okay, I'll stop now. Uh, we're, we've got the ground modification mod. I've reinstalled it. I got rid of it because I wasn't really happy with some things it was doing. Um, look, I'm going to prove that I'm a man of my word and I'm going to go and get that little bit there and then the rest of it we'll get in tomorrow's episode. Um, I, will can, I will start laying that area out with concrete very soon. That's going to be our next big task. We've also got plowing to do. We've got fields to join together, new fields to make. We've got so much to do. This map is just like brimming with possibilities. It really is. So my weekly question is, we are in the process of cultivating up half of our sugarcane field because the cows, bless their hearts, escaped from their pen and they ran rampant across the field and they have destroyed the crops so we are cultivating in the damaged half of the field because it is utterly useless for anything else and then we've got to decide what to do so do we just leave the field as it is until we harvest again and then deal with the field as a whole or do we plant replant with sugarcane the half of the field that got damaged it's your vote it's your game head in the comment section down below let us know which one you want and why and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner 
And if you enjoyed this episode, please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.